Hey guys, Alex from Seventh Hour Films back again with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we had the first mission from the boss. Uh, after Mista defeated uh, Arts and Crafts guy, uh, they got the ten. It was ten billion lira, right? It was a bunch of money. They they got uh, Polpo's fortune, and with it, they paid it to uh, one of the other capos and. Because of that, uh, Bucciarati has now been promoted to Capo, uh, which is pretty cool. And their first mission from the boss is to take care of his daughter. Uh, his daughter that he just recently learned about, but everyone has learned about it, and now they want to take her out or uh, try to get intel from her. So the gang has to watch over her. She's a lot. She's a lot, but that's all right. But uh, we're, they're going to do their best. And uh, Narancha was sent out on a supply run when he was uh, uh, caught up by a guy, what was his name, Formaggio, I believe. And um, yeah, he is trying to find uh, Trish, but uh, Narancha is currently working to defeat him. And that's pretty much where we left off. So yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like always, the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comments for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here we go. Okay. Well, first off, okay, the Hitman team. I don't fully care... But I understand what they're doing. They're setting up... They're setting up... Presumably, we're going to be fighting all of these guys at some point. Because they're going after Trish. So we have to get through these guys, who are also the opposition in trying to take down the boss. It's interesting. It's two sides that want to take... T kind of want to take down the boss. But they're having to fight against each other. So... Um... So, uh, that's I interesting. Uh, okay, how do we... I Man, I don't know if I can handle that, this talk again. What episode was that? It was The Devil. September 24th, 2020. About two years ago. About two years ago, we started this debate. Um, because Paul Nareff could not see through his stand. And it was stupid. Like, incredibly stupid. Because this has never been a problem again until now, apparently. Which, I mean, to the credit, I guess, I wouldn't really expect, like... Them making a point of, oh, how can he see through his stand? And it's like, well, that would make sense if they preface with, how can he see with his stand? It doesn't have eyes, you know? And then you realize, wait a minute, it's a plane. So a plane would have the technology. It's not traditional sight, but it's something else. That's fine. So there's that. But the implication is... How can he see through his stand? Nobody can see through their stand. Except Jotaro. And, uh, what was it? The Empress? And, like, most other stands. So, this has always been something that Polnareff could not see through Silver Chariot. Yet... Everyone else, pretty much, if your stand has eyes, you can see through them. Hell, you can talk through your stand. Polnareff can talk through his stand. He can't see, though. Joseph could talk through his stand, and it doesn't have a mouth. And now, the issue has been brought up again because of Narancha, because of Lil' Bomber. I suppose I should give it the credit that... It doesn't have an eye. Like, I would assume... So, okay, so it must be some sort of an automatic stand. 
It must be some sort of an automatic stand rather than a stand he controls. I don't know. But, like, you would almost think that if he could see through Lil Bomber, it would be him seeing through where a pilot would be. That would kind of make sense. So I guess it's that. I don't know. But anytime the topic of can you see through your stand gets brought up, it just it just aggravates me. Because it's one of those things of... It's one of those, this is a rule of stands. Except when it's not. You know? And that's the most infuriating thing about stands. Is that there are rules until there aren't. A stand is an extension of your soul until it's its own living being. A stand is always controlled by its user until it's superfly, which is hot garbage, you know? So, yeah. So I can't get dragged into that. I can't get dragged into it. The point is, Narancha cannot traditionally see through his stand. But, when that guy, when Lil Bomber is flying around, that dude doesn't hide, you know? But maybe he thinks, well, it's not a normal stand. It's a plane. It's not humanoid. It doesn't have eyes. So he's thinking, well, because it doesn't have eyes, like my tiny feet, it won't be able to see. That is then proven wrong because it uh, goes by breathing. Which is, a, you could just have a raider. I don't know why it had to be specifically breathing. But, in that sense, it is also very similar to Sheer Heart Attack. Because Sheer Heart Attack, Kira did not see through that. I give that a little bit of leeway of Kira not being able to see through Sheer Heart Attack. Because that's not his main stand. His main stand is Deadly Queen, you know? That is just one facet of his stand. Which, the more I think about it, is still bullshit, but whatever. Um, but that is just one facet. And it's an automatic, so it goes off on its own. So I can understand that. And it seeks by heat. It seeks by heat. And Lil Bomber seeks by breathing. Again, it's a plane. You could have just gone for any old radar, but it went for breathing specifically. Oh, well. Oh, no. But the implication is that you cannot see through your stand. Unless you can. Oh, well. But I'll let it go. I'll let it go. Little Bomber still works, so... Uh, we had everything with uh, the Naranja getting smaller. And uh, then the whole thing with the pen, which was interesting. Um, and, okay, the Hitman team... I thought hitmen were supposed to be subtle. Because I guess what it would be is that anyone who looks at, you know, that dead guy who is, I guess, in the Italian parliament, they would just be like, oh, well, he and his uh, girlfriend, wife, or whatever, uh, they got hit by a car. You know, I guess that's what people would generally think. But... He the car ex the car expanded from within him, so wouldn't there be blood all over the car, like everywhere in a way that someone would look at that and be like that that didn't just crash you know that exploded out of him you know one would think I don't know but we got the hitman team uh, which includes uh, Ed from Ed and Nettie. Uh, in anime form, and a bunch of other edgy-looking dudes, and a guy with black eyes. I don't, I don't know how that works, but all right. And uh, it did have two other dudes, but they're dead. One of them, Sorbet, was uh, cut up into what they say, 36, 36, uh art pieces by the boss and the other guy was watching in horror and most likely suffocated himself on the gag um 
and so they because they were they want to overthrow the boss and reap all the reward of the drug trade so i mean i guess that's the interesting thing is like you know this is another group that wants to overthrow the boss but not for the noble reasons that jarno and bucciarati want to you know uh so that's really interesting but yeah but the boss sent his message so this is why they're going after trish instead of well the boss himself at this point because that's all they can do so yeah so interesting i mean i guess pretty much and also i didn't uh last episode i said there were only four capos clearly i was wrong because i i miss i i didn't see the uh the the chart i guess the 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 i guess the tree of the the passione correctly the first time many capos there are many many capos but this seems to be the group that we're dealing with for a little while uh which is interesting so yeah an, an interesting group of uh adversaries so yeah it, it, it's interesting it's it, it's interesting when they go into the backstories and stuff of that i'm i'm kind of sitting here like okay well i have no investment in these villains you know it's not like going into like it it's not like going into non anxious backstory which we don't know you know we've had abakio we've had mista now this you know this little uh section of the story is about narancha but we don't know anything like we haven't learned anything about him maybe we will next episode but taking that time on i mean it's like good i understand i, I guess you know i understand the this team now but still they kind of suck they kind of suck i mean i guess they're a threat but at the same time i don't know i don't know not much else to say about this one uh it, it was fine it, it was good it was fine uh it's just that uh, i don't know maybe i the whole thing of uh being able to see through your stand i i don't know i guess i just get like triggered by that because it it drives me up a friggin' wall when the rules of stands are inconsistent you know and that's the thing for something that is so open as a stand a stand can literally be any power on in in your imagination but there are rules there are three four maybe five rules total and i hate when those rules are not followed because you you have to follow those rules you stay in those limits because from those limits you get really creative really interesting powers superfly is not one of them and that i will fucking die on that hill because that one that is the most garbagey one of the entire series right there but it's beside the point the main point is it's fine they explained not on stand enough i get what they were going for at first it seemed that it was oh how can he see through his stand but it, it seemed to be more of how can he see when his stand doesn't have eyes you know it's a non-humanoid stand and then they realize oh you know the guy realizes oh wait he has some sort of you know i guess secondary plane ability basically i mean his ability is plain that comes with a lot of stuff you know that comes with everything that would be in a plane such as a radar it's very specific a very specific breathing radar but still a radar that you would expect in an airplane you know so yeah and then everything with the hitman team it's fine it's interesting it does set up the villains but i mean it does also show it's like yeah two of them were just offed by the boss you know like i i guess that sets up the boss to be even scarier but it didn't really set up these guys as great villains you know so and the fact that we're spending so long on this guy you know formaggio it's like just i don't know just get get going you know i want to get i want narancha to beat this guy and then we move on to something else you know i don't know we don't need to take forever oh, maybe i'm just being picky again it's entirely possible not wouldn't be the first time probably won't be the last oh well we'll have to see where this is going next time that is basically it with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care
All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all of my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.